guys. Taking a look at some of these non-contact voltage detectors. And I have a lot of these things. Keep one in every tool bag, even non-electrical tool bags, because on the campers, you can have a condition known as a hot skin, whereas, uh, you know, in a, in a camper, everything's kind of, it's bonded to the frame as far as like the, the ground, you know, it's not really a ground until you, you really don't have an earth ground until you plug in the shore power. So all the grounds are bonded to the frame of the camper. And uh, when you're plugged in and someone has the outlet wired wrong, or you can have a faulty component, like a bad converter or an outlet that has got the hot and neutral reverse, your frame will be energized. So anything that would have normally been a ground will be hot. So even working on plumbing or anything like that, pull that out, you know, quick little test, turn the thing on and see if it's hot, you know. Then I know I have some other stuff that I need to work on first because that's a more pressing issue. So that's a hot skin test. That's what's known in the RV industry as a hot skin test is you are checking the frame in two or three spots to see if it is energized. And if it beeps, then you know um, that you have a, a hot frame condition. So taking a look at these, um, I bought this one. I just figured that it was going to be really good because it was a flute and I don't really like it that much because when you turn it on, it does, it's flashing. And I think in the manual, it says to show you that, uh, the batteries are good or that it's working, but in every other voltage tester that I have, it, um, the flashing is normally indicative of of uh, power, whereas on this flute, it, uh, it, it just, it flashes to show that it's on and, uh, you know, that the batteries are good. And I don't really like that because typically, um, on a, uh, on one of these. So like on this ideal, which I recently bought, it does it a different way instead of flashing like so. It just uh, has a green light. And then when you get near power, it goes to red and you get your audible. And the stronger it is, supposedly, the stronger the uh, source. So it goes from red to green. Now, because I stick these in pockets, I can also appreciate the uh, the blister buttons on these a little harder to uh, press versus the uh, raise button, which on the flute they did kind of, if you can kind of see, they kind of have it recessed a little bit so it's not sticking up, it's kind of flush. And I keep that one in my general purpose bag. Now this is the Kiwitz. And this one has adjustable sensitivity. And this was my uh, my first one, and I was used to it the most, which has the button similar to the flute, uh, broke the clip on it. I thought I threw this thing away because it became unreliable. Sometimes it wouldn't alert when I was actually on a live circuit. So, and I changed the batteries in it. And I've had a few times where I kind of knew stuff was hot, but I check it anyway. And it, um, it showed that it wasn't. So I deemed this tool to be dangerous and unreliable and I got rid of it. Well, I stopped using it, you know, but I mean, I guess sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But uh, this one, you have to hold the button down for it to work. I 
I don't really like that because sometimes I'm having to stick these in places in circuit boxes and things like that. And this is one I got from Harbor Freight. Those are Ames. All right. This one I got from big box store. Uh, whoever sells Southwire or used to sell Southwire. Uh, I got it from that big box store. And these two I got from big box stores too. The Fluke and the uh, Ideal. Lowe's sells Fluke products. And uh, right now they still have some Ideal products. They're dumping them for Klein. And I ordered this one off of Amazon, the Kai Weeks. I tried a couple of the multimeters and it was, uh, and they were, they're okay. They were pretty good. Uh, the clamp meter, it has an issue with the switch to where it doesn't make really good contact on the switch wheel and the thing. Let's see if I got it in here. Got it in my electrical bag. And the thing doesn't come on all the time and I have to kind of like put pressure down on the switch because I kind of know what's going on with it. So on this, uh, on this meter here, So sometimes like it won't come on and I have to press down on this. It's like the, the fitment of the circuit board and everything is, is not very good. And, and this is one of the cheaper meters, you know, but I had another one which uh, is not a clamp meter and the quality on that was much better and I, di I didn't have any issues with that. But on this one, uh, sometimes the, uh, you will turn it on to a setting, but the screen will be blank. And then I'd have to put pressure down on the switch. So uh, that's what's going on with that. But yeah, all of these things are different. Um, some of them have features, like the Fluke has extra features. The Kiwis have extra features. And uh, I didn't read the book on the Fluke, so. Uh, and, and maybe it doesn't have many extra features uh so if you know put it in the comments uh which what's the model number on this one you can see which one i have okay this one has features and they're easy to operate because it's kind of on the button but before i get into that let's look at what these things are rated at right so all of these <laughs> It's a wild range, and this is something you want to pay attention to when you're buying these things, is the uh, what's it rated for. So, and I have them, let's see, I'll try to put them in order here. Let's see, what's this one? That one. And then what's this one? They all should have the rating on there. Should have a rating on it. Do, 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 do. Okay, okay, I see it. Okay, so this is the order. So the Kai Wheats, this one is rated at 12 to 1000 volts AC and it can pick up 50 and 60 Hertz, okay? This is important because if you're dealing with a, a lower voltage or something that should be 110, but you're tracking the low voltage issue and it's running at like 90, well, if you had this fluke, which is rated at 90, it, it's at the lower end of its range, but it should be able to pick it up, but however, the south wire is rated at 100, so anything under 100 volts, it's not going to detect it. And that might have been what some of what I was running into, and I was thinking it wasn't working because I'm chasing down all type of uh, electrical issues, and uh, I need voltage detectors at that can handle lower voltages, which is why this is one of my favorites. 
it has a sensitivity button. I can set the sensitivity on it to where I can pick up a voltage from this far away or I can make it to where it has to be dead on the wire. Um, this one is the lowest of range and it also can differentiate between the hot wire and the neutral wire. So, and then the, uh, the Harbor Freight one is at 50 before I move on. I think this one is 50. Yeah, 50 to 600 volts. So this one can pick up 50 volts. That's, that's pretty low, that's pretty good, 50 volts. If you're chasing down a, a 120 low voltage issue, you know, probably shouldn't be below 50 volts. Now where these can get on your nerves is uh, with ghost voltages and things like that. And if I know I'm dealing with, you know, big bundles of uh, cable and I'm working on a circuit and I'm running the system hot, but I'm turning off one circuit, it'll bleed through at about 30, 30, 40 volts or so. And then uh, you'll think your line is hot when it's not, but it's really just ghost voltage. And then you can you can verify with a meter on low Z. This doesn't take the place of a meter. This is just early warning. So uh, in a case like that, I would probably be grabbing my flute or the, uh, the south wire, the ones that have the higher, the higher lower end you know, where their low end is set kind of high. And then I can eliminate the ghost voltages, you know, really quickly while I'm doing a quick check before I pull out the meter. These ones, these are the on the low end. Uh, like I said, this one's 12 volts. This ideal, it's 24 to 600. And then this AIMS is 50 to 600, all right? This has the biggest range and it's adjustable, so that might have something to do with it. It can go all the way from 12 to 1,000, all right? So it can hit the higher end that these have, but also the lower end that these two have, okay? So we have this one on. Right now the sensitivity is set low. And as you can see, I'm on the neutral and it's not showing me anything, but on the hot side, it's showing me. So, and then when I'm dead on, it's showing it, but inside the neutral, nothing. So it can kind of differentiate between the hot and the neutral. Now, if I turn the sensitivity up, I don't have to even get on the wire and, it, and it'll show it. The slow beat, is the neutral the fast beat is the hot and when when you see it turn red then you know you're on the hot on the same wire i can go on this side and it's showing green because that's like the the ground or the neutral so kind of far away get on it it's gonna go so that's what i like about this meter of course this one has a flashlight. Uh, I don't really use the flashlights on these. I guess it can come in handy, uh, especially if you don't have one or your batteries went dead unexpectedly on your normal flashlight that you carry. The Ideal also has a flashlight and it also has an option to mute the, uh, the sounder. So uh, sensitivity check, turn it on. So it's pretty sensitive. It's starting to alarm before I get to the wire. It, it also has a slow beat on the neutral side and it has a fast beat on the hot side. Slow beep on the neutral, fast beep on the hot. Okay. And when it's off, when it's not, it, it's green it's on and it's ready, but it's not showing anything. It also has a flashlight. It's, I don't think it's as bright as the, uh, the one that's on the Kiwis, but it has one. And then of course the aims, this one, no on off. You just have to, you got to hold the button down and the sensitivity is very high, which can be a problem um, 
because if, if you're dealing with a lot of different wires, like I'm saying, like if you have a bundle that you're separating, it's gonna really pick that up. So this one's gonna be super susceptible to uh, ghost voltage. See, even from back here, it's going off and you can't turn it down. Unlike the Kaiweech, you can turn it down when you need to pinpoint something. So that's the drawbacks to this. I mean, I guess this one, for safety wise, you, you know the thing hot. So for a um, hot skin test, this will be very good for a hot skin test. Uh, it's gonna pick up, uh, you know, the low voltage. It's gonna be per super sensitive. So it's good for like a hot skin test. Now the flute. Turn it on, it starts flashing to show you that the uh, tool is on. Now, this battery is being charged and it lights up, but uh, I guess I had, to, I had the beeper turned off. So you can mute the beeper on this. It's a one button thing, so you have to kind of read the book to see how to, to turn certain features on and off with this thing. But the sensitivity is, is not very high. This one, you need to be on the wire. And uh, I'm on this live line on the neutral side. It's not showing me anything. On the hot side, it's showing me. So even stuck into the outlet on the uh, on the neutral side, it's not giving me anything. But on the hot side, it's, it's giving it to me. So pinpointing stuff, narrowing stuff down. This is on the higher end. The low range is 100. This one would be pretty good for that. I. Uh, I think I like this. Well, let's go to the south wire. Uh, we won't leave him out. Green, like the ideal. Red for hot. And then on the neutral side, it's staying green. So it's the sensitivity is more so like on the flute. In between these two outlets, it's it's a little higher than the flute because uh, it can it can it's it's not even giving me a chance. But over here on the neutral, it's picking it up. So it's it's a little more sensitive than the flute, but uh, not not as uh, accurate, I guess I would say, as the ideal. The way these are designed internally are similar. Okay. So that's what we got. And what we have underneath this is uh, what I was working on today, which is a logic control. I had to, uh, I troubleshot this logic controller. And uh, this is the in command. There are several different ones. I work on the in commands, the Firefly, uh, the uh, spider controls, the G6s, the G12s, uh, pretty much any of them, the KZ1s, C-Zone. All right, so, so this is what you have. Uh, this is the logic control. If you have a touch screen in the camper, this is what is controlling that touch screen. A series of relays and switches this is uh looks like a potentiometer but it's not it's a selector for um manual controls of slides jacks and things like that when your touch screen fails you still can have some uh options so this is uh the install that i had to do some more manual buttons awnings and uh Dip switches were not used on that, but I'm sure that's for configuration so that this can be configured a different way.
this little guy is about eight grand. So that's $8,000. And uh, if you are replacing one and working on one, that's your terminating resistor. You definitely want to uh, know what you're doing and you don't want to burn it up because it's eight grand. If you do, then that's not gonna go over well with the customer or if you're at a dealership or if you're parts guy. It's definitely not gonna go over well. It's not that hard. Take pictures before you disconnect it. Disconnect all power, unplug it. Physically take the wires off of the battery. Disconnect the solar controllers, then work on this. You know, do not work on this with any type of power going to it. Very important. But yeah, guys, that's what I got. I also like to mention on these uh, skill. Let's see if I can get this battery off. I noticed on these, uh, I don't know if, if you guys have any of their power tools, their right angle impact driver is very good, but they give you, they, they make this thing to where it's a power bank, you know? So this thing is also a power bank. So you don't have to get like a top off like you do for the Milwaukee so that you can get some power out of this. This thing gives you, makes it into a little 12 volt power bank, which is pretty nice. Uh, I think more of them should do that. You know, especially, man, that'd be nice. You got a nice big five amp hour, six amp hour battery, and you can uh, use it as a power bank. Phone's going dead, especially techs in the field. You're using that phone for invoicing, for GPS, personal use, for calls, for all kinds of stuff, and it really runs the battery down, especially with the wireless car play. And uh, it's really nice to be out in the field when your battery's going dead. You can take this with you wherever you're at. You're not tied down to a vehicle and just bring your power cord and plug it up and just have it wherever you're working at in your pocket so you can still answer it. So I think more of them should do that. That's what we got, guys. A Couple of my ideal tools that found a new home. This, I work with the uh, this driver and it was good. I, I leave the square one in there because uh, that's mainly what I, when I use, you can see I got a couple power drivers and I fit it in here with this uh, 12 volt uh, cordless tester because uh, it's kind of thin for this pocket. Now, um, my Kiwit is the one that I keep in this electrical bag, but uh, because of some of the stuff that I showed you guys, I'll probably be moving this and just sticking that somewhere else. And then uh, let's find a spot because, you know, veto bag. And I will take and put one of these uh, higher, higher rated ones in here as well. So now I have a Adjustable sensitivity, very low one, and a higher one closer to the 100 volt AC range in here. And then my flute, uh, which is on the higher end, I will take that one. And uh, south wire, like I said, I got hit a couple times, but it might have been because of low voltage because this is on the higher range, but so is this. So I wouldn't need both of these. This one's 90, this one's 100. If anything, I would pair up the flute with the, uh, the Harbor Freight one because it's uh, 50 volts. So it's on the lower range. So I will stick the fluke back into my general bag. And uh, I will also find a spot for the, uh, for this guy, which it doesn't really matter where it goes because uh, as long as it's, uh, as long as I have it in the truck. All right. But that's what we got. I know it's been a long video. My videos normally run along. So thanks for making it to the end, guys. See you later. RV Tech Pro out.